Hi, I'm Nadia Susanna, and I go by Nan. And I help successful coaches get rid of stress eating and be in control around food. Have you ever noticed yourself reaching for chocolate or other comfort foods as if you were on autopilot when you're feeling anxious or maybe stressed or maybe overwhelmed? Well, do you find yourself thinking that it's so easy, it's just too easy to indulge in these treats? Well, in this episode, discover the powerful techniques to stay in charge of your eating habits, even when you're surrounded with loads of tempting snacks. Why is it so important to master the art of resisting temptation? Well, here are three main reasons. The first one is the reduced consumption. If you master the art of resisting temptation, then of course you'll eat less, which means you'll probably be healthier and you'll manage your weight. The second reason is that you will increase the appreciation. You'll enjoy more what you eat, basically. You'll savor what you really eat, whether it's chocolate or another snack or whatever. And you'll appreciate your life more if you don't have extra pounds on your body. And the third, uh, reason why you really want to master the art of resisting temptation is that you have you'll have improved self-control and by that I mean you will feel in charge as far as food is concerned which means that you'll be able to adapt this skill that you've learned to other areas of your life. So here's what may be happening to you I know it happened to me it still happens from time to time to me and to some of my clients you notice you feel overwhelmed and you're also thinking about this chocolate bar in the cupboard right there. And immediately your brain offers you the thought, it's so easy. And when you think that thought, it's so easy, chances are that you feel confident, sure of yourself, certain. And if you're anything like me, when I feel this way, when I feel confident, sure of myself, certain, then what I do is that I don't hesitate. I open the cupboard, I eat the chocolate bar, I don't, don't even think of interrupting the pattern, and I don't even question the action. And when I behave like this, as if I was on autopilot, then as a result, what I create for myself is that I make it easier and easier for myself to eat more and more chocolate bars when I'll feel overwhelmed in the future. I have strengthened that neural pathway in my brain that says, well, if there's food in the cupboard and if I'm feeling overwhelmed, then those two go together. It's so easy. I make it easier for myself. The good news is that you're not feeling confident and you're not reaching for the snack because it's here because the snack is here because you're feeling overwhelmed. No, you're reaching for the snack because you're feeling confident, because you're thinking it's so easy. This sentence seems very innocent, and yet it's the sentence that's driving you to have the snack. And it's true, it is so easy. Nowadays, snacks are everywhere, and it's so easy to take it, unwrap it, eat it. It's not like roast beef or anything that we'll need to marinate and <laughs> simmer. It's just so easy indeed. It's meant to be consumed easily. So what do we do? Well, the first thing that I like to do is to recognize that I'm thinking this thought that it's so easy, right? And even if I, it seems as if I'm noticing something, it's not true. Here are a few clues. First of all, when we think it's so easy, it's as if we're just telling the news, we're just noticing the fact that it, <laughs> eating this chocolate bar, for instance, is so easy, right? But we're forgetting that actually we're seeing it as easy. And we know that we're seeing it as easy because somebody else would, be, would think, well, oh, no, it's too complex. I just first have to open the, fr the, the cupboard and then take the chocolate bar and then unwrap it and so on. It's going to require so much effort. Having this apple is going to be so much easier. It's true. We could think of other people who would think that this, eating this compared to eating that, is going to be easier or more difficult, right? 
when the thing is the th same, the food is the same. So we are deciding to think that this is actually easy. And not only that, but we're also adding a degree to it. It's so easy. It's not just easy, it's so easy. No wonder we give in, no wonder we actually reach for the food because we do believe it's so easy. So what to do when we notice this thought, it's so easy and we reach for the food? Well, first of all, I always like to do exactly that. Notice, notice the thought, notice that sentence in our brain that we chose. The second thing that I like to do is always to question. That's what we're going to do in a minute. And the third thing is to decide what do we want to think on purpose. So let's go to this second step, which is to question. Here are three questions you might want to ask yourself when you notice that in your brain you're thinking it's so easy. First question could be, why am I choosing to make eating chocolate bars this easy? Right? Because it's a choice. Everything that we think, every thought that we think is a choice. It may not be a conscious choice. It may have been before and we forgot and now it's unconscious and we seem to be on autopilot. But actually, it's a choice we've made at some point and that we've repeated over and over again, which makes it very easy for us to go to. Right? So one question like, why am I choosing to make eating chocolate bars this easy, can make you aware of this pattern in your brain and make you choose again whether that's something that you want to choose, want to think on purpose or not. That's the first question. Why am I choosing to make eating chocolate bars this easy? The second question could be, what else could be easy for me, right? For instance, we talked about eating an apple, eating a banana, or maybe doing something else. It could be processing the emotion of overwhelm, for instance, or it could be going for a walk. What else could be easy for you and actually beneficial? Because we've seen that this thought, it's so easy, actually creates a result that it makes it easier and easier for you to reach for the snack, right? So what else could be easy for me and be actually beneficial in the long run? A third question could be, how can I make eating chocolate bars more difficult so that I have the time to re-decide whether or not I'm going to eat this chocolate bar? We're not trying to suppress eating chocolate bars. Chocolate bars exist, they're here, it's okay. <laughs> but what we want really is to be in control of what we put in our mouth, right? So we can re-decide, do I really want this chocolate bar or not? But to redecide, to be able to redecide, we need some space, we need some time, we need some distance, right? And it's a concept that I teach to my clients, the distance, which I spell with an X, D-I-X, right? It's a pun because in French, dix means ten. And it's a little reminder to add either ten seconds or ten steps or ten moves between you, the when you want, when you notice the craving for the snack, and actually taking action, right? If you have this distance between you wanting something and you obeying this desire, then you have the time to redecide. And maybe you do want the snack. Nothing's wrong with that. But maybe you do want something else. It could be an apple, it could be a banana, it could be going for a walk, it could be the end result. If you don't have the snack right now, what will be possible for you in the near future? What will you create for yourself in the long run? Maybe that's something that you want to consider. And to get to that place where you have this opportunity to redecide, first of all, you need to ask yourself, how can I make it in chocolate bars? more difficult so that I had the time to redecide whether or not I'm going to eat this chocolate bar, right? Examples are, it could be putting the chocolate bar somewhere else and changing the location of the chocolate bars from time to time so that you have to think about it again and again. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, right? If you don't know which piece goes where, then you have to think about it. Similarly, if you don't know or if you have to remember where you put the chocolate bars, 
then in the meantime, while you're looking for them, you'll have another opportunity to redecide. Is that really what you want, right? So you can also decide to count up to 10. As you're reaching, as you see yourself reaching for the snack, you can count up to 10. And that may be super subtle because eventually you may want and eat the chocolate bar. But because you're counting one, two, three, etc., up until 10, in the meantime, you're noticing yourself being in control, being in charge of that gesture, right? Increasing the space between your desire and you obeying the desire and eating the snack. Speaking of thoughts, here are three thoughts that you may want to adopt or adapt because they could help you. If you notice yourself thinking it's so easy to reach out for the chocolate bar in the cupboard when you're feeling overwhelmed, well, here are three thoughts, three sentences that you may want to uh, adapt for yourself. The first one could be, I'm noticing, I'm thinking, eating this chocolate bar is so easy. Just realizing that you're having a sentence in your brain may help you see it as something that is optional and not something that you have to react to, right? It's taking a step back, being able to change your perspective. That's the first option. I'm noticing, I'm thinking, eating this chocolate bar is so easy. The second thought, the second sentence you might want to consider is, what if allowing my craving instead of obeying it was as easy or even easier, right? What if doing something else instead, like just feeling the emotion, feeling the craving was actually as easy as reaching for the snack and eating the snack or even easier? And that could also be a question that you want to answer uh, on a piece of paper, coming up with as many answers as possible. That could be fun. And the third thought that you might want to consider is, I want my life to be as easy as can be. Because this thought, it's so easy to reach out for the chocolate bar, is only focusing on the chocolate bar, on the moment. And usually when we do that, we only focus on the present. It's like a toddler, and this is really the primitive brain, the primitive part of our brain, the toddler brain, we are offering you something in the moment. It can't see the bigger picture, it can't see the future. But after the facts, after having noticing that you've eaten a chocolate bar, or even before you know there are chocolate bars and you know that you may be tempted in the afternoon or in the evening, you can decide, I want my life to be as easy as can be. And you can ask yourself what it would be like. Right. So instead of reacting in the moment with the toddler brain that has not much choice, you can use what we call the prefrontal cortex, the grown-up part of your brain that knows what's best for you in the long run so that it can gently, kindly redirect this toddler brain and reminds the toddler brain in the moment that maybe, maybe other things could be easy for you, easier for you in your life if you consider just not reacting to this temptation, not obeying this craving. What do you think? Do let me know if this video was helpful because I'm making it for you. And if you want to take this work deeper, if you want, if you're ready, and if you want to take the next step, well, you can come and join me for a free strategy call where we could see where we are right now in your stress eating freedom journey and where you want to go. And we could establish a personalized plan just for you so that you can see exactly what steps are between where you are now and where you could go. This is exactly what I do with my clients. I take them through this journey. I, held their, I hold their hand. I'm here by their side so that they can finally be just like me now, which is amazing, free from stress eating. All right. I wish you a very happy day. Take care.